Hey, what up, guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Yo Mesa. Thank you for coming back to this uh, space uh, for film photography and sharing my thoughts and whatnot. Uh, today, we're going to do a different dynamic since, well, you know, at this point, I think most of us know what's going on with the uh, uh, virus around the world. So be safe, take precautions, and don't take it lightly, you know. And hopefully, you know, we're going to go through this easily but since we cannot go outside or at least that's what we're supposed to be doing not going that much outside and avoid as much as possible for now uh probably you guys can you know hopefully you can have a way to get your hands on some of these books that i'm going to show you that i read recently is related to photography and mostly um, all of them are somehow you know about mexico if you don't know or you know Probably you know at this point, hopefully. Uh, I'm not from the US or you know any other uh, English speaking country. I'm from Mexico actually, I'm from TJ, Tijuana. And for, you know, um, when I, I think for a lot of us, sort of when you start uh, photography, you kind of go through like the most popular, and not popular in a negative connotation, but like, you know, um, the masters and the more um, the well known photographers around the world you know tend to be in certain parts of the world or like you know back in the day that's like the zones and areas that they will you know, take on and as time go people are you know eat all that information for these masters regurgitate it and transform it um, in their own sort of you know style and photography around the world so I decide to, since, you know, again, you, most of the classes that I take online and schools has been like, they show you all these amazing photographers, but I want to go back to my roots. And, and I think it's really important as a um, creator or artist or photographer to sort of go back to your roots and like explore the photographers that are in your, the place that you live in, the probably you can connect the most because more likely, you sort of know the um, the ways of of the culture and the people that live there. So I thought it was a great exercise. So I choose for books, and you know I'm gonna show you today. These all these are by, um, if I'm not mistaken, by Mexican photographers, um, and I'm being for the most part, um, you know, love them and like them, and and I'm trying, you know, I'm I want to know more about them and assimilate more of their work, and especially because. On most of these books, um, one you know, one way or another, they explore things that happen in the country where I live, or I used to live, and I can relate it to that. And that's extremely important. And always, you know, find photographers that you can relate to. I think that will enhance, you know, the, whatever story they want to tell through photography. First book is the one that is called "We Live in Mexico," and obviously, this book is. A little bit old, you can tell by you know the, the graphics and the type of photography. Um, and this one is um, by Carlos Amonte, and pretty old, I think, in the 70s. This guy just went through different. Basically, it's, um, he took stories from characters or people from every state, if I'm not mistaken, um, for um, um, old Mexico. So he went, you know, north all the way to south and choose different you know characters and basically they're full of portraits and like street photographer and environmental portraits i will say it's a little bit dated but i understand it that was kind of like um sort of the type of photography like pretty formal like really really formal mostly environmental portraits but you can enjoy it uh, as you right as i'm talking i'm gonna put some b-roll with some of the pictures i'm not gonna put all the pictures of all the book because you know, I don't think it's fair. You guys should sort of get him if you feel interested. But it's a real example to learn about the culture, especially from the 70s, 80s, um, and the people and how different is almost each state in Mexico. Like, um, and I'm pretty sure it's the same as a lot of countries, but there's not a lot. There's just a handful that you can see like such a big difference in the way that they live and you know the culture and the richness of each part of the country so again tell me if i'm wrong and actually if you have uh something like this book from your own country or wherever you are it will be awesome if you leave it in the comments so i can hopefully get my hands on 
but yeah, and um, obviously this is an old book, so I bought it used because, you know, so far I couldn't find it new, but it's pretty great. Highly recommend it, I enjoy it, and you know, you should try if you want to learn about Mexico. I guess. This is the other one, the Cuerpo Presente by Gerardo Montiel Clint. Uh, you can, I will leave his link on Instagram. It's a more contemporary photographer in Mexico. And basically this book, it's a tons of sort of uh, kind of like high-end art portraits about death and, and you know, and, and sort of depression and melancholia. That's at least what I got from this book. It's really interesting. Um, this guy, has an awesome uh, gallery on Instagram, so you should go and check it. And basically, he went to different like environments, like the desert, uh, um, kind of like motel, crime scene type of photography. Really, really interesting. And I think this guy nailed it in that style that he wanna sort of, you know, portray these people like. A, or, or most of them like a murder scene and that's because his father if I'm not wrong based on what I read and a little bit of text is here his father work as an investigator or investigator a murder investigator or something like that and obviously uh, he had he will see photos I guess when he was a kid and sometimes maybe even going to crime scenes so it's really interesting because um, there's another like a holiday in Mexico, Day of the Dead, and you know, it's it's really close to that, like how to, instead of being afraid of dying and, and all these topics, is more like embrace it, and the only way to surpass that fear is obviously to acknowledge that, well, we have a, you know, a, a clock that's gonna ring the alarm and we're all off, I guess. So really interesting. Um, I love it a lot. Really short, not not expensive at all. I, I got an Amazon for um, I think 50 bucks. Again, you know, prices prices fluctuates all around. But this is a really good one. It's really dark, really um, edgy, and um, I think it has a great work in here and highly recommend it. The next one, and I think at this point uh, maybe a lot of people are familiar with this um, photographer Manuel Alvarez Bravo. Um, this specific book is from the series Masters of Photographers by Aperture. I never had the chance to really uh, check his work. I saw it from time to time in the list, but you know, again, y you go with the usual um, photographers they, you know, they recommend all the time, which I don't blame them, you know, nothing wrong with that. But I never had the chance, so I decided pull the trigger and bought this uh, book and I'm 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 really um, happy that I did it and the reason is because the way he captured people in, in the little town that he lived in Mexico especially back in the day probably 40s 30s I think if I'm not wrong correct me if I'm wrong remember I don't have the truth the whole truth but um you know like these type of colonized towns it reminds me a lot um, sadly, my grandma Euphemia is not with us anymore, but I, tr I traveled a few times um, to the little town in, in Mexico, in South Mexico, and it truly, like, I, if every single picture I see this, is like I was there. I went instantly transporter to those little towns where they will have still animals and, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, animals, and like they will go for corn in the field, you know this rural town so it is an amazing book highly recommended i love the way frame how intimate he gets with certain people like um you've probably seen in the photos he even um photograph uh sort of famous people at a time the framing again like he, he makes you immer emerge in this Basically in his town and where he lived, you know, that's another example of don't, you know, don't think that you all you need to live in this amazing city to create amazing work. And actually, it's better if if you're photographing a city than nobody knows because uh, most likely, like, whatever city you think, New York, LA, Tokyo, you know, all these big cities is being photographed over and over again, and that's fine. But you know, then you find these jewels on 
places you never thought or even your own town. You should go outside and photograph your surroundings and the people that surround you. It will be great. So this is another good recommendation. Uh, great Mexican photographer. So this is the last one, quite big actually. You can tell the difference, like my head size and how big it is. Um, and this book is Good Girls by Maya Godet. And it's pretty interesting. Um, and by the way, as big as it seems, it's not as expensive, you may think, also on Amazon. And uh, this photographer in particular started doing this work because somehow she wanted to sort of know the meaning of she being a woman and the role that she plays in society, especially in a Mexican one, that as much as you guys like to see the May, like uh, Cinco de Mayo and uh, the party and all that stuff, sure. I always said, yes, we are like that sometimes, but also it has a big complexity with with a lot of taboos and macho culture and and yeah, women's not being treated as great, uh, despite a lot of people hating me to say that, especially in my country, but it's the truth. It is, it's a problem, it's there, so this is a good example to sort of noticing because, oh, you know, Woman has a role in the Mexican culture. Whole now is changing, but you know, it's not being accepted. Like, oh yeah, they should be. You know, there's issue with men trying to understand that women just have to be treated equal. So you know, for a lot of men in Mexico, they're already low. But then you know, prostitutes and all these other sort of uh, group, it's at the lowest. So she went to really rough Mexican neighborhoods to start, you know, noticing, yeah, the prostitutes and their environments and what conditions they live and the, what they go through. Because once we put at a level uh, with us taking all the, you know, uh, judges that we can have and just seeing, like, put em empathize probably. That's the word empathize and sort of known in what conditions they live and what they go through in their daily life day-to-day -day life yeah you humanize it and you can understand better so this is great it's a lot of awesome graphic um, sort of documentary style photography it's amazing how intimate she went with with the subjects that she choose and uh, it's not easy especially in these environments it's, I don't think it's really easy to have that access to to their intimacy, especially for them, you know. The stories, there are a few interviews in here too. They're amazing and and the, the type of questions and answers that you get, like you can sometimes kind of choke a little bit because it's pretty tough and real. And then you don't know what these people go through, like at all, like we just see them from the outside. How it's a system that, you know, make them stay there, especially in a country like Mexico, once you probably, you people know that you're a prostitute, you never, you know, stop being a prostitute. You more likely you will come back and leave from that for the rest of your life. And as you know, I'm not going to tell you much more of this because an awesome book, probably from the four of the books, this is my favorite just for the type of work and how much passion you can tell this photographer put um, on this work. So there you go guys, four awesome books. I know right now probably you're gonna be thinking like, dude, um, you know, probably I don't wanna, you know, order from Amazon because what's going on, but like you can put them on your wish list or, you know, put them on your, uh, at least that you have the books that you wanna buy or something. And that's it really. Um, my take on books is like, is it really important for you to buy them M more? Most of the time we wanna buy like really frugal things for gear or stuff, but, Buying photography books is a really great investment. Uh, you can tell me like, oh my God, it's so expensive, whatever, and then you buy, I don't know, something ridiculous that you don't need because it's gonna improve your photography. And I'm, I've been there, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm not done that, but I try to balance it. And books are really great to develop your eye, see other work and styles, story, and the way that they tell the story with their photography. It's, it's, you know, it's just a better investment. Um, so there you go, there are four great books. If you guys have recommendations for me to see certain books that you, you read before or do you love, please leave them in the comments. That will be awesome. I will try to check them, most of them, you know, again, on a 
slowly pays because money is tight. But that's that's it, guys. Let me know what you've been thinking about the I Should Film series. Unfortunately, the last one is number seven. Um, I was planning to do three more, so I cut the season, the first season, on ten episodes, and then I'm gonna about to start second. But now, unfortunately, it's gonna be stopped when the you know with no time frame until like could this happen or we have more info on uh, when we can get out of houses but you know again be safe stay with the family uh, don't go out if it's not necessary uh, it's not that hard I, I mean yes she's sure it's hard to stay at home all day but compared to other uh, issues that happen around the world like, this is nothing you know and just that is, uh, yeah, pretty much that. Be safe until the next one. And thanks for keep coming to this channel, guys. I really appreciate. And um, adios.